Homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Today we're looking at the story of Theratissa, the idle one, and this appears in the Sayings of the Buddha, the Dhammapada, and it's verse number 280. And at the time, the Buddha was staying at Jetavana Monastery, and there were about 500 men that were admitted to the order. So this is from the commentary uh, to the Dhammapada verse. And it says that the Buddha was actually teaching these new monks and giving them some instruction on a specific meditation subject. And so all the bhikkhus, these new bhikkhus, except for one, went to the forest to practice the meditation. So they were suvacha, they were willing to be instructed by the Buddha and willing to attend to the practice. And so these 499 monks, they practiced with a lot of energy, they were vigilant, and in due course, all of them attained arahantship. And when they returned to the monastery, they went to pay homage to the Buddha. And the Buddha was very pleased and satisfied with their achievement. But this one monk who hadn't gone, who had stayed behind, his name was Bhikkhutissa. And he was the one that didn't try very hard, and therefore he didn't achieve anything. But when Bhikkhutissa found out about the Buddha being pleased with these other monks and all that sort of thing, he felt you know, quite neglected and, and regretted that he had wasted all that time. And so he resolved to practice meditation throughout the night. But when he was doing walking meditation that night, he slipped and he broke a thigh bone. And so the other bhikkhus, when they heard his cry for help, they went to help him. And then when the Buddha heard about this incident, about bhikkhutissa and striving in the middle of the night, what he said to the monks is that when you don't strive at the time that you should be striving and you uh, waste your time, then you won't get to the mental absorptions, you know, the jhanas, and therefore the wisdom doesn't come to you easily. The wisdom path doesn't, you can't gain that wisdom path. The actual words in the Dhammapada are these, Uttana Kalami Anuttahanu. So one who doesn't rouse oneself at a time for exertion, Yuva, Bali, Alasi, Yang, Upeto, who though young and strong is prone to sloth, Sangsana, Sankapamano, Kusito, who with a mind intent on exhaustion and indolence, Panya, Ya, Magang, Alaso, Navindati, the slothful one will not attain the path of wisdom. So there's a few things for us to pick up here. The first one is about not rousing yourself, not becoming active at a time for exertion or, or energy. So that's the first point that when it's time to apply oneself, it's very important to do so. I mean, this applies even in conventional terms that if it's time to study, one needs to attend to the studies because if there's a test coming up, likewise at work, during work hours, one is meant to apply oneself, you know, rouse energy for that. If one has duties at home, the same kind of thing. If it's time to clean the house, you need to rouse up energy in order to do so. Otherwise, things don't get done. So the time factor is something that what, you know, each of us need to think about. That when it comes to Dhamma practice, when you find pockets of time, that's when you need to apply yourself, particularly as a lay person. And when you do find the time, then it's really to make the most out of that, of that time. So whether it's memorizing, whether it's understanding you know, Buddha's teaching in a, in a deeper sense, whether it's contemplating the Dhamma or watching a, a Dhamma session or participating in a Dhamma session, or when it comes to doing the walking meditation or sitting meditation, that one applies yourself because we all know that time is quite limited and then you come to the statement that the Buddha says, who though young and strong is prone to sloth. So in this reference, Buddha is talking about youth and was also talking about strength. And I think the youth and the strength, there's something in it that when you're young, you have more strength, you have more vitality. And as you age, it starts to decline. And that's just the natural order of things. And so when you take this on board, this particular line, whether you're young or old, it's important to know that at any age, uh, but particularly when you're young, not to waste time. And when you start to find yourself, you know, through this aging process, then it's also good not to get into these bad habits. 
So some of our habits come from previous parami in, in terms of maybe our previous underlying tendencies rather than parami and also our bad habits that we, we have cultivated in this life. And so we really need to apply ourselves to overcome the tendency or the propensity to be idle, to be slothful, to be indolent and to really pick up and find that strength in order to apply oneself. And in Dhamma, this is particularly true, that if we allow all the different grounds for idleness, for laziness to take hold, which is really saying sometimes we say to ourselves, I've done this work, so uh, I'm not going to uh, apply myself now to Dhamma practice or I'm going to do this work so I'm not going to apply myself to Dhamma practice now or I'm tired so I'm not going to uh, do this Dhamma practice now or I'm going to be tired so I'm not going to apply myself now or I'm going to take a journey and so on and so forth uh, the, there's a sutta on that the kusita something sutta but you get the idea that we have these reasons these grounds for idleness, laziness that kick in that, that we really need to overcome. And so the next line is, you know, with the mind that is intent on exhaustion and indolence, it's because when we imbue our minds with things that are more uh, on the sense basis, that they're more sensual, that we tend to exhaust the mind, that we tend to imbue ourselves with defilements and hindrances because that's what take, takes hold. So the basic formula is always that if you make contact with something with your mind and then the covetousness arises, you want to gain something and you go towards it with delight and you talk about it and you remain holding, then where you end up at the end of the day after experiencing even maybe a little bit of sukha is you end up in sadness, in this kind of displeasure at the end of it or even as you're going through it. And that exhausts the mind and then the mind has a tendency to go to dinamita. So once it goes through first the karma chanda, the hindrance of karma chanda, then it goes to be a pada. So you have that um, sensual desire, ill will, you know, when it ends or when it changes, and then you end up in sloth and torpor. Usually we spin a few rounds of that. And so that, that's what the Buddha means, that when you go through that process instead of arousing energy towards seeing through things and attending to the Buddha's instructions, then the mind gets intent on exhaustion, on displeasure, and then on indolence. And then the last line is around the wisdom, the path to wisdom, that one who has the type of practice that is slothful, that is idle, that is bent on indolence or uh, leaning towards laziness, then you won't gain the path of wisdom. You won't be able to get into the mental absorptions because the mind is too heavy, too blocked by hindrances, too blocked by defilements. So Deratissa, although he's called the idle one, he gives us a lot in this story about not applying yourself at the, at the same time. So all the other monks who were new monks at the time with Bhikkhutissa, they all gained arahanship. But instead, you know, this uh, Bhikkhutissa, he, he was behind in, in all of it. And then when he went to apply himself, it was, it was difficult for him. And so we can gain a lot from this particular story, this particular Dhammapada verse that the Buddha gives. And we can apply it to our own practice to look at ways to energize and look at ways for inspiration and to not allow bad tendencies and bad habits to take hold. If you remember recently, we went through the Tayo Dhamma Sutta in Anguttara chapter 10, discourse number 76, and we we're looking at both what makes us incapable of realizing Nibbana and then what makes us capable of realizing Nibbana. And when we're looking at the Buddha's teaching, if you look in this yellow box, then you see that we were looking at indolence, kusajja. And we were saying that uh, the Buddha was, was stating that if one has kosajja, then you're incapable of giving up a restlessness, which is udacca, lack of restraint, which is the indriya asangvara, and then the lack of virtue, which is the dusila, the immorality. Whereas 
uh, what uh, the Buddha is saying, even in this Dhammapada verse uh, to the monks about uh, this Tissa Bhikkhu, uh, the Buddha is saying that if one has energy, if one rouses energy, such as Aradaviryo, instead of this indolence Kosaja, then one is capable of overcoming restlessness, overcoming the Indriya Asangvara, overcoming the lack of virtue, the Dusila. So instead, one would cultivate um, the opposite. You would be less restless, so you'd be more calm and composed if you aroused energy. You would also have a very healthy sense of restraint, sense restraint. And then you would also definitely ver on the side of uh, virtue. So you would actually make sure that you don't do anything unskillful. You, instead, you would do things that are skillful towards the, the, the path and developing wisdom. So this is another way of, of explaining this portion of what the Buddha is saying from something that we've already looked at. The sutta that I was trying to reference earlier is this Kusita Rambhavatu Sutta. It's in Anguttara Nikaya chapter 8, discourse number 80. It's an excellent sutta when it comes to all the grounds that we give usually for uh, indolence, for idleness, that inclination towards laziness, not wanting to move. And so indolence normally arises when we feel we're too tired, when we feel like we don't have enough energy, that we want to veg out, that we want to lie down. And so it gives these eight types of uh, grounds. The first one is that we've got some work to do. And the second one is we've done some work. So in the first case, we're anticipating and so we don't want to arouse energy. The second case is that we feel tired and we don't want to exert energy. And then the third and fourth is around making a trip. So in anticipation of a trip and then having made a trip, the same kind of thing that in anticipation, we don't want to arouse energy because we don't want to waste any energy. And the fourth may be that we're tired and after making the trip. Then the fifth and sixth, was in reference to bhikkhus, monastic sangha, in terms of having gone to get alms, they've received either insufficient food or sufficient food. So in our case, when it comes to eating, it's the same thing. When we feel that we're hungry, we don't often want to rouse energy. Our mind is distracted towards that. And when we've received sufficient food, sometimes we think, oh, I just want to go and have a rest. And then the seventh and the eighth is around illness. So when you're sick, you're a little bit sick, you think, oh, I can't, I can't do this work, I can't arouse energy. And then the eighth is that when you've recovered, again, you give yourself this out saying, well, I've just recovered, so I can't really apply myself right now. I need to uh, build up some more strength. So th those are the eight things that the Buddha says. And what the Buddha says in that sutta is the way you think is you think, I'm tired, why don't I go and lie down? So then you go and lie down. And so when you do that, when you go towards that, these, these grounds for indolence, then you don't make the effort towards reaching what hasn't been reached and you don't attain what hasn't been attained and you don't make effort towards realizing what hasn't been realized. So this applies even in conventional terms that when you don't apply yourself, when you go with any of these grounds, then you'll never reach uh, towards the goals that you have in life and you won't attain them and you won't realize them. In terms of Dhamma, it applies to both learning and practice. So if you don't make effort, then you won't learn. And if you don't learn, uh, if you don't apply yourself even to practice, then, then you won't get uh, the, the results. You won't attain the fruit, the fruit, which is the path and fruit that the Buddha talks about, Magapala. And then when it comes to realizing, well, you won't realize the truth, the Four Noble Truths. You won't realize the path of wisdom the panya, and so you won't be able to be liberated and free from the whole mass of suffering. So Buddha emphasizes very strongly that with this indolence, we are always erring towards the side of dusila, that we'll be okay at some point tolerating the wrong speech, the wrong mental actions, the wrong uh, physical actions, because we want to indulge. We start to think that it's okay being with sensual pleasures, that it's okay to just be idle. And therefore, once you go in that direction towards sensual pleasures, then sensual desire as a hindrance arises. And then you start to spin the rounds of ill will, then sloth and torpor, and it just gets worse, really. And kosaja, this indolence, really creates uh, this weakness in the mind, this lethargy, this dullness in the mind. 
And so the Buddha, if you remember from the Thaya Dhamma Sutta, what we were saying was that it's very difficult to go to higher concentrations. It's very difficult because of these hindrances, the dullness in the mind. And so it blocks that progress towards higher concentration, the jhanas. It blocks it towards idipadas, the basis of spiritual power. It blocks it towards high abilities such as the idis, the, the, the psychic powers. So this is a very good sutta to look at both from conventionally what we try and do in our lives towards studying, towards work, towards other things like that, but also very much so when it comes to Dhamma practice. So I'll leave it here. We can share the blessings. We can share the merit with all sentient beings. May all beings be happy and well. May all beings be free from suffering. Blessings of the Triple Gem, wishing you all well. Teruan Saranai.